Today you're going to look at graphing a quadratic in standard form. Okay. We've looked at vertex form, and if you remember, vertex form was the y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we called it that because we could see the vertex of h and k just by looking at this equation. We're not going to be able to see just anything with standard form. Okay. So if you remember from a couple lessons ago that this is the standard form of a quadratic where we have our a, which is our quadratic term, we have b, which is our linear, and c, which is our y-intercept. Okay. We're going to use this equation and we're going to manipulate a few things in order to graph. So here are kind of all the steps. Pause it, take a look, you've got it down in your notes. Okay. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now. Um, but if we find a, b, and c, we're going to use that stuff to graph. And we can find our x value by using this. And this will give us the equation for the axis of symmetry. It will also give us the x value of our vertex. And then we can just sub it in to find the y. So here's our equation. So my a which is in front of here, is going to be 1. My b, the coefficient in front of the x, is going to be negative 8. And my c, which is my y-intercept, is 17. Well, it's not going to do me any good. My graph only goes to 7. So I need more points. So to find my axis of symmetry and my x value, I'm going to just sub in. So x equals negative of a negative 8, because it's negative negative b, right? That's like the same as negative 1 times b, all over 2 times 1, which will give me 8 over 2, which is 4. So my equation for my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 4. Okay, so you're going to have your axis of symmetry going through here. And then I can find my y value, because my vertex is going to be someplace around there, by going to my original equation and subbing it in. So y equals, my original equation was x squared minus 8x plus 17. So y equals 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 17. So that's going to give me 16 minus 32 plus 17 and if we do 16 minus 32 we get negative 16 plus 17 which is 1 so that's my y value of my vertex so my vertex is my x and my y 4 and 1 and then I can just use the same method for graphing the points that we did for vertex form. So I'm going to go over 1 and up 1 on each side of the axis of symmetry, over 2 and up 4. Okay, and there is my parabola. Again, if you're not liking that, remember that you can just sub in values um, for x and find more points. So if you let um, I'm just going to change this to make this f of 3. You can find another value. You can do 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 17. So 9 minus 24 plus 17. 9 minus 24 is negative 15 plus 17 is 2. So you would have the point 3, 2, which you do. And then you would go over 1. That's why that looks funny. That should be here. <laughs> Sorry. And then you've got that point right there. All right. Here's another equation. Okay. A is 1. B is 4. And C is 2. So if I plug it in x equals negative 4 over 2 times 1, which is negative 2. So again, my axis of symmetry 
is x equals negative 2, and that's my x value of my vertex. So subbing in to y equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 2. Okay, now remember that when I square a negative number, I get a positive number. So I'm going to get 4 plus 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 2. So I get negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. So my vertex is going to be negative 2, negative 2. My A is 1, so over 1 and up 1 on both sides, over 2 and up 4 on both sides. So my, verte my parabola looks like this, if I can hit every point when I draw. All right, we've got two more examples. <clears throat> so now my A is negative 1 half, so this is going to be a little bit different. B is 4 and C is negative 5. So X equals negative B over 2 times A. So in this case, X is negative 4 over 2 times negative 1 half. It's just a complex fraction, so we're going to do the bottom. Negative 4, remember this is 2 over 1, or you can look at 1 half of 2 is 1, but it's going to be negative 1 because a negative times a positive is a negative, so we get 4. And then I'm going to plug that into my original equation. <coughs> Excuse me. And solve. So I'm going to get y equals negative 1 half times 16 plus 16 minus 5. So I get negative 8 plus 16 minus 5. Remember, we're following order of operations. Negative 8 plus 16 is 8, and then minus 5 is 3. So my vertex, we take my x and the y. So my vertex is 4 and 3. And because it's negative 1 half, my a is negative 1 half, it's going to open down, and I'm going to go over 1. And instead of going down 1, I'm going to go down half of that here. So remember, we go over 1, down 1, but we're going to multiply by 1 half. We normally go over 2 and down 2 squared, or 4. We're going to multiply by 1 half, so that's 2. So over 2 and down 2. And normally we go over 3 and down 9, but now 9 times 1 half, we're going to go down 4 and a half. So over three and down four and a half on both sides of the axis of symmetry. So that's a little bit wider because that's one half. Okay. Okay. Now in this case, notice we don't have a C, okay? It's plus zero. So, oh look, that's my y-intercept, right? We're actually able to graph our y-intercept out of all of our graphs. So A was 1, B is negative 4, and C is 0. So we're going to go with our X equals negative B over 2A. So we get negative of a negative 4. Again, remember negative B is like negative 1B. So negative 1 times negative 4, which gives us 4 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So my x value is 2. Plugging that back into my y equals x squared minus 4x gives me 2 squared minus 4 times 2. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So my vertex is going to be 2, negative 4. My A is positive 1, so I'm going to go over 1 and up 1 on both sides of our axis of symmetry. 
over 2 and up 4, which we actually, knowing that, could have just graphed because we would have gotten 1, 2 over there, then 1, 2 to plot your new point. And there is the parabola. All right, so today you just learned how to graph a quadratic in standard form. And I know you're watching this with whoever your substitute teacher is today, because I decided to do this in class. So I hope you're behaving and that you have a math-tastic day and behave math-tastically.